Hi, this is Karen McKee, retired scientist and author. This is part two of ways your scientific writing may annoy reviewers. We're now at the fifth point, using scientific jargon and large words instead of simple, clear language. In 1921, the then director of the U.S. Geological Survey, George Otis Smith, wrote a paper called Plain Geology, in which he promoted the use of simple, straightforward language in geology papers. In it, Smith gave a number of examples of incomprehensible language. Here's one example. The argillaceous net character of the formation is very prominent in some localities, although it is usually subsidiary to the arenaceous phase. You're probably scratching your head over that one. I know I did, and I'll bet even a few geologists would have difficulty with it. Others use scientific jargon like this to sound more knowledgeable and authoritative. Here's the translation. At some places, the formation includes considerable clay, but generally it is made up chiefly of sand. Incomprehensible diction makes your readers work harder to understand what you are trying to say. Some reviewers will become quite annoyed if your paper is chock full of undefined terms and multisyllabic words that they have to look up in a dictionary. Of course, there will be technical terms that you must use and for which there are no substitutes. An example might be photosynthesis or transpiration. Although technical, these terms are in wide usage and wouldn't need to be defined in a plant physiology paper published in a botanical journal, for example. On the other hand, if you are submitting a paper to a general science journal such as Nature, you may need to define your technical terms so that the readers outside your field can understand your paper. And that's really the reason why you want to write clearly and simply. Using a lot of technical jargon reduces your potential audience to a handful of experts. Most journals want papers that will be of interest to as many readers as possible. Six, related to uh, general jargon is statistical jargon. For example, I often see student papers that make a statement such as, there was a significant interaction between salinity and flooding, P less than 0 .001. This sentence leaves the reader adrift to figure out what exactly happened in the experiment. A better way is to say, the effect of flooding on plant growth was greatest when salinity was high interaction effect P less than 0 .001. So don't use statistical jargon to describe your results. Explain what happened in your experiment in clear language that even your grandmother would understand and use the statistics to support it. Seven, a generally verbose style of writing. This type of writer uses multiple words when only one will do. Here are a few examples. In a careful manner. Use carefully instead. A large majority of. Just say most. At this point in time. Do you mean now? Such writers also use unnecessary phrases such as, it is interesting to note, or due to the fact that, these phrases can be replaced with a single word or omitted altogether without altering the meaning. For example, it is important to note that our study has implications for restoration of wetlands. That can be restated as, our study has important implications for restoration of wetlands. Wordiness impedes communication and adds unnecessarily to the length of your paper. Another problem is use of nominalizations to convey action. For example, this is an action expressed as a nominalization. We conducted an analysis of the data. 
analysis is the nominalization of the verb to analyze. Compare that to we analyze the data in which the real action is expressed in the verb. Nominalizations are a problem because they make the reader work harder to figure out where the action is. Eight, hedging. By this I mean using words such as suggest, may, possibly, and putative. The results suggest that the treatment may have caused the plants to grow taller. Excessive hedging like this will cause the reviewer to doubt the validity of your results. If the treatment had a significant effect on plant height, then say so. The treatment caused taller plants, P less than 0 0.001. Well, those are eight reasons why your scientific writing might irritate a reviewer. It's not an exhaustive list, but is a sampling of writing mistakes that I often see or hear about from colleagues. If you are a reviewer and have other writing mistakes that particularly bother you, please leave a comment. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by tapping the like button.